The following is a true story. I take the 524 train into the city every morning. Mind if I take the paper? Mind if I take the paper? The takeover of Grovacon torpedoed last night. Check it out. Adding QAL to the S&P tomorrow. Check your position. How'd you know? Hutton. Pardon? Layman. What? Smith Bonnie. Oh, oh, you mean your job? Goldman Sachs? Where I work? You trade, yes? Yes. It's Cordell Sleeback, of course. Yes. Hot it's fine. Uh, yes. Solid. Yeah, I'd say. Small. Uh, well, not your fault. No. Q and QAL, how did, how did you know? Your stuff. The paper. Oh. <laughs> Money is the price of life. Money is the price of life. Ralph Waldo Emerson. You think he's right? I don't, I don't know right now. Let me tell you a story. A couple of years ago, I'm in big on a trade. Not on my own, mind you. I got company. My partners and I, we have what you call information. One of my partners, this was his first big trade. He was a $10, $15 guy at best. Now was a different story. Don't get me wrong. This fellow had money. Money was not the problem. The problem was he didn't have it. Here. Do you have it here? Me? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You have it. Don't sell yourself short. You have it. You do. It's written all over you. But this fellow, this man of whom I'm speaking, for him, the jot was just too big. He fell apart. I'm not exaggerating. He fell apart with worry. He stopped sleeping. Stopped eating. A few weeks later, he was dead as dirt. The irony is, this is really tragic. A few weeks later, we all get out with a six-point bump. Money in the deepest sense of the word. But for him, money was the price of life. Will you take it? What? The paper. You haven't read it. Oh, no. You can have it. Here. You were a traitor. Not by profession. Oh, well, with your skills, you could have a job at any house. As the hooker once said, if they pay you for it, it's not love. <laughs> Take a look at copper cathodes. It's traded London metal.
I did it. What? Copper cathode. It's nothing big. Small position, huh? Fly. Ten. Uh, good for you. Uh, how long? Long? The, the copper to hold it. How long, of course, is the crux. You're a cautious man. Yes, I suppose. A man who lives within his means suffers from a lack of imagination. Do you believe that? You mean me. Let me show you something. My portfolio. Oh, no, I don't think I should. No, please, take a look. Come on. Oh, these positions are large. Yeah. You're amazed. A man like me. You are. I can see it in your eyes. What about the risk? Well, that depends on your circumstances. Nicely put. about the copper, Jonathan. I put you in and I'll take you out. When the time is right. Wait, how'd you know my name? Don't miss your step. When I got on the train the next morning, the man was waiting for me. Good morning. We have something to talk about. What? The Rand Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, I know the firm. It's uh, privately held. Suppose I tell you I know a man. Yep. A man with a piece of it, the company. Yeah. What's it worth, a piece of Durand, going public as it is? Serious money. Enough to make you cry. <laughs> Sit down. This is the thing. This is the beauty part. This man has debts, sizable debts, debts that must be collected before the public offering. Follow me, Jonathan? This man, his position is worthless to him. Cash is what he needs. Stock. It's a potential. He could use it for a loan. He cannot. Because of the nature of the debt, the nature of the people he owes this money to, he must repay these people and quickly before his situation is discovered. Do you see? This is where my partners and I come in. We have been offered a piece of this piece. How much? 300,000. We have two in hand. There's more on paper, but we have decided to open up our circle, bring in other men, younger men, men with ambition. Me. Go on. Yeah, how much? Piece of our piece. Not large. Beginner stuff. Yeah, how much? Almost nothing. 20. I only have $20,000. You have 10 in the copper. Take a loan against it. That way it's only another 10 out of pocket. You, a man like you, can always get his hands on 10. Who are the other partners? These deals are based on the silence of friends. The lesson of Ivan Bosky, what you don't know can't hurt others. I myself am acquainted with only three of the other partners. Man looking for opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Not on a subway. Opportunity, by definition, is happenstantial. If you only see what's obvious, you'll never be rich. Copy DM, Jonathan. If you don't, you'll hate yourself in the morning. I have to think about it. You'll find yourself checking the quotron, looking for Duran, watching what should have been your future slipping away from you. I have to think. Balls is what is required here. What is required here is to be a man. I check. Cash on the line. Check could be traced back to you. Yeah, of course. Tomorrow morning.
I didn't get on the train that morning. And I never saw the man again on 524. I thought about him, though, about whether I had narrowly missed being conned, or maybe I had turned my back on the biggest opportunity of my life. In the months that followed, I couldn't stop thinking about why the man had chosen me. Did I look so vulnerable, or did I have a weakness in my character so evident that it attracted the man to me? Even now, I cannot say. He was right about one thing, though. Duran Pharmaceuticals did go public, and I did check the Quotron for it every single week. By the end of the year, it was up 20 points. About a year later, I caught a later train than usual. On street, Wall Street. Change here for the number two. Mind if I take the paper? Croft Integrals is talking merger. Check it out. Hutton, Lehman, Smith, Barney, Goldman Sachs. In trade, yeah? Next stop.